Hi friends, it's Annie Grace, author of The Snake in Mind, and I have been sent an article lots of times over the last 24 hours, and the article is titled, Moderate to Heavy Drinkers Are More Likely to Live to 85 Without Developing Dementia. And whenever an article like this kind of comes out in the media, lots of people send it my way and say, what about this? What about this? I know you talk about um, the health aspects of drinking, but what about this article? And I want to say a few things about this, and I've printed off the, you know, the study where this article actually came from, the actual study, which is always a good place to go if you are truly curious, and um, just want to address a few different aspects, because articles like this are incredible. We live in a headline-based society, so things like this just get shared and shared and shared, and you know, the science of sharing is interesting. People share stuff for very specific reasons. People share stuff for something called social currency. Um, they share things that they think will make them look good or smart, or that will confirm behaviors that they have that possibly they don't feel great about as a way of like cognitive, you know, bias, like really getting into feeling better about things that they might not feel great about. And Everybody, you know, likes to share things like this. So this article has been picked up by all sorts of publications shared over and over and over, um, which I find really interesting. And interestingly about things like this, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of studies about alcohol's harm on our health. And there's a handful of studies saying that alcohol is somehow good for us. And some of these studies do have some interesting factors about them that, you know, I definitely explore in my work. Um, but what I think is interesting is if you look at what has been shared popularly, again, we live in a headline culture, and what is shared on social media and how we digest information in this day and age, often just reading the headline and not even digging into the substance, things are shared so much more around these benefits of alcohol than they are around some of the harms of alcohol. And so we've developed this very cultural bias into things, you know, being quite readily available at the tip of our fingers about alcohol being good for us and not actually looking under the surface. So I'm not sitting here to say definitively that, you know, one way or the other, what I am saying is like, let's look at the facts. Let's look under the surface. So one thing about this headline culture, I'll say, is there's a PhD, his name is Dr. Jurgen Rem, and he's a senior scientist for the Center of Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto. And he cautions us about this very fact. Um, he says, quote, we've counted how many studies are reported in the press, and there are many more reports on the beneficial link to support um, than the detrimental link between alcohol and health. There's 10 times the evidence to support the dangers of alcohol, and this is real scientific evidence, yet it's a small fraction of the research that's supporting the benefits of drinking that is published and shared across social media with often those purported benefits taken out of context. So that brings me to my next point on this. I wanna talk about things being taken out of context because the headline to this article is, quote, moderate to heavy drinkers are more likely to live to 85 without developing dementia. First of all, when you're just skimming that headline, what you're gonna read is moderate to heavy drinkers are more likely to live to age 85. <laughs> and, and without developing dementia, it's kind of gonna fall off the consciousness. So already we have a problem that you're just not gonna read the entire thing. This article says nothing about the fact that people are um, more likely to live longer as moderate to heavy drinkers. It is talking specifically about the fact that if you have lived to 85, you are less likely to have dementia if you're a moderate to heavy drinker, according to this article. Um, really interestingly, if you go into the article itself, it says, <clears throat> this is a study by neuroscientist Linda McAvoy, and she says, quote, this study does not suggest that drinking is responsible for increased longevity and cognitive health. Alcohol consumption, particularly wine, is actually associated with higher incomes and education levels, which in turn are associated with lower rates of smoking, lower rates of mental illness, and better access to health care. So in this very short article, which I printed out, she basically says, look, <laughs> there is a correlation here. It's a maybe, but it's not increased longevity. And it, we're not even saying that it's, you know, making cognitive health better. What we're saying is that in this study, this study was done with people who were drinkers, who had very high education levels, access to better health care, and lower rates of smoking. And that could very well be why this is. Um, and of course, they put that in there to sleep at night because the headline, as it reads, is going to tell you that alcohol helps you live longer, which isn't true. So, you know, speaking of 
this. Let's, let's look at this study because there's a few things I would like to read about this. Um, first of all, uh, this study was done between 1984 and 2014, and there was four different points in time during this study when they looked at the cognitive health. There was one point in time during this study, uh, alcohol intake was assessed by a questionnaire in 1984, and it says, we examined alcohol consumption right here at only one point in time during this study, which went from 1984 to 2013. So it was one point in time when alcohol was examined, which is interesting. I mean, so it was examined at one point in time. The other really interesting thing I found about this study was that, <laughs> and this is just says something about our culture in general and how desperately we want to believe that alcohol is, is good for us. Um, but of this study, so there, this study was done, I'll tell you the exact number. It was done on 1,344 participants, 728 women, 616 men. And of those people, 49% were moderate drinkers, defined as one drink a day every day. 36% uh, were heavy drinkers, defined as three drinks a day for women, four for men every day. And 5% reported excessive level of drinking, which is more than, than the heavy drinkers. Now, um, that's 90% of people were drinkers in this study. So we're talking about, we're comparing the 10% of people who were not drinkers to the 90% that were, and then making you know, a, a decision about their cognitive health at the age of 85. 49% of the people died before they reached 85. So now we're talking about even fewer people. So this headline that's causing all this sensation is based on a few hundred people. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, what else I'd like to point out is that, so of the non-drinkers, only 2.1% of them were lifetime abstinent people. What they, what they talk about in the study is that actually the non-drinkers, a lot of these people had stopped drinking for health reasons, which is why they were non-drinkers. And so it says, quote, non-drinkers were more likely to report being in poorer health than the drinkers to begin with. So I think that's really interesting. Um, Non-drinkers in this study had the highest number of medications. They were taking more medication than the drinkers. And again, this is a very small percentage of the overall people that were non-drinkers. Why weren't they drinking in today's society? It's it's not typical not to be a drinker unless you have health issues or unless you had you know, excessive alcoholism and you had to stop drinking. Um, interestingly, also, the non-drinkers with these health issues who were on more medication exercise significantly less, and that's on, on this page here, they exercise significantly less than the drinkers. So again, could that have something to do with the fact that at age 85, they were cognitively in better health, this 90% than the 10%? Definitely, like there's a lot of things in here that, you know, the study is taken. Yes, there's there's a connection, but it's definitely taken out of context. Now, um, <clears throat> so another instant compared to the lifetime abstainers or the 2% of people who never drink, the former drinkers, which is the 10% that we're talking about, uh, were significantly more likely to be smokers, past or current smokers. So that's another reason that this study could be very relevant to, if you're a smoker, there could definitely be, as with drinking, um, cognitive issues. And it also talks about there was a significantly increased risk of cognitive impairment in the excessive drinkers. So the people who were in that group of one drink a day to three drinks a day, there was no issue, or we're saying it was better at age 85, they had slightly better cognitive, but the people who were excessive drinkers had worse, and the people who were non-drinkers but had these other issues, smoking, worse health in general, lack of exercise, were worse. So I just want to put that out there. And then this study, it says, our results are in contrast to those of a population study in Norway that found that frequent drinking was associated with increased dementia risk compared to non-frequent drinking. So they published that their results are in contrast. Um, and then they examined al alcohol at one point in time, 1984. They didn't look at how much these people were drinking again. Never, not even at the end of the study. Alcohol was examined at one point in time. and um, is there anything else that I think they want to say? There's a lot of caveats at the end of this study that they had no assessment of cognitive function for prior to the assessment of alcohol. So we can't exclude the possibility of reverse causation that may have resulted from pre-existing cognitive impairment that, and that in fact led to the decrease in, in drinking that they're saying is um, relevant in this case. And then they do say, of course, in the United States, alcohol use contributes to 88,000 deaths annually. I want to put that in context for you for a second. 
88,000 deaths annually from alcohol. How many deaths annually are there in the United States from prescription drugs overdose? And, and we know this is a big problem. There's tons of headlines all around um, about how people are overdosing on prescription drugs, 24,000. How many deaths per year in the United States on all illegal drugs combined? 22,000. Okay, add those numbers up and you have, if my math is right, 46,000. 88,000 is the number of deaths from alcohol, yet we're talking, I'm a little bit speechless because we're trying to say it's good for us and then we're sharing it everywhere, yet it's it's four times as many deaths as all illegal drugs combined. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, <laughs> but I just wanted to make that point. Um, so they say alcohol use contributes to 88,000 deaths annually and has a substantial number of additional adverse health, economic, and social consequences. For this reason, it's not appropriate to recommend anyone initiate drinking. As a conclusion to this study, which is the real study, which I just suggest you read. Anyway, the point is we live in a headline society. Things like this are gonna come out all the time. Things like this are gonna be hugely widely shared, but just look below the surface a little bit and you will see that things like this aren't generally what they seem. So anyway, this is Annie Grace. Have a great day. Thank you so much.